Yes. We should do it. We live in. Sometimes I have to tell who's speaking in this way, but we'll speak. Yeah, we'll yeah watch it. <laughs> all righty. Well, I see nine o'clock on the clock there, so we might as well kick off. Um, thank you all for coming for today's 6th of July Paramount and Coral Community Board meeting. Um, we do have an apology um, from Jean Ashby. Any other apologies? There being none, I'll just move that they be accepted. Is that the apology be accepted with a decision? Oh, yeah. All those in favour, please say aye. And uh, we'll just open up with the public forum now. Um, so uh, just to be tidy, we'll have Jan first so she can return to her chair. Jan. Yeah, um, I'm just um, um, coming in on behalf of some people from Colville and people on Colville Road um, regarding the road closures. And what we'd like to um, council to consider, or pinnacle whoever it is, to consider, is that the road is opened um, between um, 10 past 10 oh. and half past 10, um, Monday to Friday, please. So there's a few reasons for this. Um, people coming from Colville, if they've got appointments um, in, in Coromandel, means they have to leave home really early to, to get through um, and yeah, if they've got appointments at 11 o'clock means they have to come through at sort of 8 o'clock and hang around town or whatever. The RD getting through um, means that they have to get through and they don't even leave town at 8 o'clock. Um, so we'd like that to be a consideration please. So there's a lot of people who have um, asked me to step forward. I've said to them to actually write in, but they've asked me if I would do it on their behalf. Right. Okay. Um, so the other thing was was that um, the other reason was that it's been extended from seven weeks, which we were first told it was going to be, and now it's going to be ten weeks minimum. So yeah, just it's a long time. You know, for, for it to be happening, and it's a huge gap. So, if that would be a consideration, it doesn't even have to be half an hour. Yep. So 20 minutes, quarter of an hour, and 20 minutes would be fine. Thank yeah, you. We have the right man in the room today, so we'll get yep, on to that later that. on. Does anyone have any questions for me? No. no. Thank, no. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, we have quite a good sized public forum today. Is there anyone that's Chris for time. Pete. Yeah. Morning. Morning, Chief. How are you? Thanks, Peter. Um, I won't hold you guys up long. I just had well, <clears throat> um, the Royal. We are the uh, St. Collins uh, Committee, uh, and this is to do with the. The little block wall that runs down on the boundary. Um, it's really not fit for purpose. The uh, uh, what's what's happening? They're getting the vehicles get one wheel on the concrete, one on the grass, and then they drive down, and then it opens up into quite a big a big area for them to uh, do their wheelies and uh, all sorts of other silly things. So. The, um, the the top plates that you know that kind of make the wall. It's quite a few broken, and that's and that's where the guys are driving up and over the wall to to get on a bit of an angle so they can get down to the back. Um, the, the lawns are nicely maintained and and and, and manicured and look fine. And it's, and it's a shame that after the you know sometimes when they've gone home they just made a big mess. And, and I know I picked up one of the um, pamphlets that, that whoever hires the hall gets a copy. Um, and it's probably not quite forceful enough. It just it's, all it's saying is uh, hire is for, the, is for the hall only in the grassy area at the rear. And to the side of the hall is privately owned property. And that's all it says about it now. I think that needs to probably needs emphasizing that there's no vehicles to go on onto the private property. Um, it gets a bit ridiculous, Peter, and then, and as the evening wears on, there's not much you can do. 
about trying to get rid of them either because it's <laughs> nobody wants to talk to you very well so and yeah it, it just I, I originally i can remember it being it, it was to be a wall higher than that so it'd be a seat that run right down mm. the full length um so if it was i think if it was well I, i'd like you to go and visit it i'd mm. be happy to be there at some stage um and, and just you know let's have a look at it and see what we can do because it's it's too nice an area um for them not to be able to use yep um when whatever's on there's always kids out there kicking the ball and chasing each other um funerals the crowd spreads out and gets into a bit of shade perfect it's just those vehicles that will not and, and um so we just need to address that and, and the problem will go away uh so that's me so any questions i've got one um so would you need to get a vehicle down there any longer to to unload for the kitchen because you got that side door in now mm. haven't you uh, well, yeah. now there's a classic example, like we had the, the meeting in there the other week for the tracks uh, forum yeah. and what have you. So, so lunchtime comes uh, and turns up and, and it's it's not such an easy place to back into. You've got to get across the road to be able to back in. So mm -hmm. people always drive in forward uh, and go down as far as they can. Now, if it's raining, you've got a meeting going on in the hall, they've got to get that food back around into the kitchen. and. Um, I can't, I, yeah, um, we'll discuss these other things um, when we meet up there because yeah. it, it is short on some no no parking signage as well. Um, so, yeah, all right, well, we'll arrange it. Yeah, there. yeah, so that was you can just let me know and I'll make sure that I can be available to, oh. to be here. All right, all right, any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Right, yeah. Anybody else wish to present to public forum? Bring up, yeah. Yes, please. Good morning. Hi, Wendy. I've already sent in papers concerning what I wish to speak about. I'll speak first about both places. Department of Conservation, I understand, has asked Council to close the roads during the 10, 18 drops, which are due to happen July and August. And I'm requesting that the roads, first of all, should not be closed because the objective of the closure is to prevent the public from observing the drops. And in 2019 at Fenuakite, there were very serious breaches of the regulations governing 1080 drops. There were no warning notices. The helicopter flew well outside the permitted boundary and people received 1080 dust on them when they were standing at the Tairua Lookout Hill. So we were able to record these breaches and lodge a formal complaint. And I think it's very important that the public is able to, to observe the 1080 drops. So the request is please no road closures. And if there are road closures, that there is a place appointed where the public is close enough to be able to document the procedure of the drops. Thank you. So that deals with that. Can I just ask a question? So, you want to observe so to make sure they stay within the boundaries? Yes, and that there are yep. warning notices mm -hmm. and that the operation is conducted properly because what happens in 2019 is that the auditor from Waikato District Health Board did not report the breaches. Is there not a risk though if there is? Um, I, you know, outside the boundaries that the people who are observing are going to actually get dropped on. Perhaps that's why they have the road closures. I mean, that's a safety thing. Well, it's a requirement in law on the part of the operator, DOC, that they create a boundary, a buffer. Mm -hmm. I think it's three, three, 300 metres. 
that they create a buffer that is wide enough to protect the public. So that's what they claim, that their buffer protects the public. And I think I said in my written submission that God can't transfer that legal requirement on them onto the council to provide the, the buffer. They have to provide a buffer that is wide enough for public protection. But it happened in 2019 and the helicopter flew outside that. Then, and then the, the next major part of the written material that I sent you is a, an affidavit from my sister Naomi Pond that she tried to uh, have a meeting with the ranger responsible for this year's TN80 drops, Steve Bolton, and that in the course of that conversation, he said, um, we're, we're not consulting the public because it's a waste of time. So that's a very serious breach of the requirement under the Hazardous Substances Act, as I've documented. And this community board, thank you, has had resolutions opposing the use of TNAP 2007, 2009, 2011, 2017. You affirmed those resolutions opposing the use of TNA and supporting hunting and trapping. So I'm here to ask, please, would you write a letter to Department of Conservation and Environmental Protection Authority reaffirming your resolutions and expressing your concern that the public is not being consulted this year? If somebody expressed to me concern that you can't speak for all of the ward constituents, that you can speak for your own resolution, you, in the letter you could say, these are the board's resolutions over all these years, and we would like to um, reaffirm our resolutions and express our great concern to DOC that there is no consultation taking place that meets standards for consultation. And very, very importantly, the standard for consultation over TN80 drops is, first of all, to discuss with the public alternative means. That had to be negotiated with the public under the consultation protocols. And we are never offered consultation over an alternative option for predator control. And this community board's resolutions do support us in wanting tracking and hunting. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm. And I've got with me um, the, the mandated courier from Ngati Rungu, Francis Henare. So it would be very good if she could speak for a minute or two, please. Are there any questions for Wendy? Please. I have one for um, Margaret, maybe. Um, are those resolutions in the public domain yes. on our side? Yes, they actually okay. part of your community plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just wanted to know, I think for Wendy's sake, that it is actually there out there for. Yes, they are. Okay, thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Oh, that's all. <laughs> 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 no, anyway, I'm Francis. Then, I read the Um, uh, when I heard about the moiho, the the drop on the moiho. Uh, last week, I had written to Steve Bolton or Doc to um, uh, to give him my concerns about it because we hadn't been consulted, and um, apparently we weren't on the list. But I don't know how many lists we've been on the list for 20 years, so I don't know. Um, I think the process and what and how they docs do things is 
pretty underhanded because um, they're, well, they're not really listening to Tanga Te Whenua, and that's what I re represent. <laughs> I um, he did um, when I did contact them. This is my daughter here because um, she used to work for Doc, and he contacted her to get a meeting with with us. And we had a meeting, and he agreed to look at alternatives. But I got a letter in the meanwhile to say no, <coughs> you know, <coughs> I'm just um, you know, sort of sad because we're not being listened to. We're not we're being asked by, and it's not the first time we've had dealings with them for twenty years. It's like. They know we exist, but they're not going to pay down properly. And I think that's all I've got to say about that. Thank you. Yeah, you're definitely not alone. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> that's how a lot of people are being. But yeah, that's my story anyway. He probably will probably take legal action if they carry on. Is, is this the um, drop on Moiho you're talking about? Okay. Yeah. So as soon as I heard about it, uh, I actually I saw it on Facebook, and that's what wanted me to do something. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, just thank you. Yeah. Yep, Mike. Yeah. More than that. Um, I just wanted to um, attend the meeting to, uh, um, I, I became aware that um, Alan's finishing off the council in his current role and um, I just want to express uh, our appreciation at KILT for all the work that Alan's done and uh, wish him all the best. Mm. So I'll raise it for the, uh, the drop in, so thank you Alan. And, uh, <laughs> the time when that finally takes place. Oh, thank you. That was nice, Mike. Nice, Mike. Thank you. Very, it's a bit embarrassing, though, isn't it? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the territory, Alex. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Any ideas on how we can keep them? <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know, we're all getting to that stage, aren't we? So, um, yeah. yeah. No, no. All the very best for a happy retirement. Thank you, mate. Thanks. Got it. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you well, also, Alan. And my, the first thing that I'd like to say is thank you to each of you for your public service because it's really great that you're giving up, you give up your time to do this job, and, it, and we appreciate it. Um, we, we don't pop down that often because it's not exactly around the corner, but we're here for it. the first issue is an emergency issue from our point of view, um, and the second issue I'll, I'll discuss um, also. But anyway, so but firstly, um, heart pop thanks for your public service for us in, in our town and representing us as well as you do. And over the years, as Wendy just referred to, the resolution um, that I meant to print it out, I'm sorry, but the last one that was involved by the Coromandel Community Board um, said that you were to invite, you, you tried all these things, by the way, I mean, book, which you may or may not have, but it's probably quite good to have somewhere in, close by because it um, documents the environmental struggles that we have had since the 2000s, usually, uh, mostly against um, <clears throat> dealing with, rather, uh, the regional council and with DOC and sometimes with the so-called volunteer eco-entrepreneurial groups that we have in our neighbourhoods, um, who is work we support and who I was a member of, in fact, uh, the Moiha Environment Group, for a period of time until I got, I think I'm the only person who's been booted out of it. Um, but anyway, <laughs> as a result, um, you know, we support all of the good work that they do do, the trapping, we're totally behind. Obviously, we're not totally behind the things that uh, we all agreed um, was going to be how we would like to go forward in our communities, which was looking at more humane ways of dealing with wild animals in our wilderness and being real kaitiaki people who understand, you know, um, who, who care about the, the wilderness and who know something about the wilderness. So your, your first resolution was to invite 
the Minister of Conservation and the local Coromandel Member of Parliament to attend a meeting in Coromandel to discuss the use of 1080 and other residual poisons with a view to seeking a policy review. I, I think that you actually did try you, that has been tried in the past. I, this is all not new. This is not news to you. You know what's going on in our backyards. You know you're familiar with some of the faces who are here talking about this. It's very, 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 as, as Francis said, it is, it's beyond bad. Uh, you were to advocate on behalf of the community that all animal pest control be undertaken by trapping, hunting, and non-residual poisons, and to advocate that the, the ward be used as an example of how effective animal pest control can be um, you've done hunting, trapping, and non-residual poisons. Um, that's what you passed in this paper, because this was the one delivered to TCDC. There's the resolutions that the TCDC actually agreed to as well, which I won't. Um, that's all part of the public record, but if you'd like, I can fix you that straight after the meeting or whatever today anyway. So um, the most important, so there are, there's a little library. This book is printed by, written by Les Kelly, who came up with Predator Free New Zealand. Only his Predator Free New Zealand, he got together Doc, he got together Forest and Bird, he got together everybody. They met up on Ruapehu and they stole <coughs> stole his idea. His idea was it was going to be a uh, using good nature traps and definitely not using uh, aerial 1080. So this is his book telling that story and he's very happy to give it away for free if people are interested in reading about it. It's quite, as you can imagine, someone who really cares about the bush came up with the idea and the idea was stolen. That's his story. These guys, Jim Hilton and Roger Childs, have written this really great book. Um, I've offered these books, all of these books, to the schools. The only one in the area that took it up because they're very interested in getting their kids educated is the Thames High School librarian. She's brilliant, whereas I never heard back from the local. I don't even know if they have a librarian. I left a message for whoever is the librarian. Didn't hear back from our local school. Um, but, you know, things come and go, things change. And then these two books, this one, as you might or might not know, is available at Carson's and is The Killing Nation, New Zealand state-sponsored addiction to poison 1080. And this one tells us all about what happened in, in, our, in our area. So all of the things that you've done in the past, all of the good work that you've done, it's all documented. And I had to do it because the history belongs, as we know, to the people who are usually the the... The dominant narrative is what gets recorded, and um, so I, 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 this, this has been written because it's a people's history. So we have an emergency in our area, and I'm going to ask that you do more than what Wendy has said. Of course, we support what Wendy has presented, and in her statement, she says that Manawaiata requests that you do actually contact, you know, EPA and what have you, with the resolutions, not just to say that this is what our, our community has been wanting for some time. Anyway, um, it's really important that you communicate with health.protection at waikato.dhb.health.nz. That's the latest layer of bureaucracy that we have to now deal with. So it's not just the Hazardous Substance Act, which is dealt out and meted out by compliance officers down in, uh, at EPA. Um, it is also the Waikato District Health Board. So what? it's, it's too late. Writing, yes, it would be great if you did something today in an email. It's good to get things in writing, but also just calling to try and talk to someone. Of course, you'll have to wait for hours because it's an 0800 number, but the um, Waikato District Health Board, um, and of course, they went through the hacking period so that they didn't have, um, you couldn't get through to them. I just but, have to... Um... Point out your five minutes, sir. Okay, so um, basically, uh, we're on your side. We would like you to get that information to the Waikato District Health Board, to the EPA, and um, because it's not just it's our food, it's our water, it's the stress. I think I sent um, Bubbles has sorry has a copy for everybody the um, opinion piece that I wrote for Farmers Weekly that has got the stress that it is putting on people who live around the mountain. Can you imagine getting 24 hours notice and you have to move all your cattle? I mean, 24 hours notice is insane and they are not negotiating that in any larger amount of time. Of course, they'll know because they do a pre-feed, but what we would really like is for you to say, this is what we've been wanting, to, we've been trying to get in our area, please stop until at least some layers of consultation 
uh, can get underway. But obviously, ideally, we'd like this juggernaut stopped, which isn't going to happen overnight. Um, so that's so it's an emergency, and we need your urgent help. And it's people's lives, and you are our representatives. So we'd really, really like you to take that action. And um, I am actually taking up. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I've been donated the three minutes from um, the award for today. So if you don't mind, I'll just mention the other topic, which is now out in the arena. The regional council has funded some people over in <coughs> uh, Te Araho, I think, over in uh, Kennedy Bay, and they mentioned that they want to do some groundwork for da, 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 a pest-proof fence. Now. In here, I have documented the last time round with the pest proof fence, but since then there have been uh, research papers, if you like, I can reference, reference you to them. Paul Schofield from the Canterbury Museum with his colleagues from Lincoln University uh, did research to find out, to show how pest proof fences are, they work out to be more than $2,000 per hectare to be to, for the area to be taken care of. And as you know, we're still paying $2 million a year for Monga Tauri. So the point is, the people who would have been fenced in, who signed a big petition back in the day, we are uh, kaitiaki, 82% of the private land that would have been fenced in, and we do not want to be fenced in. But the research done made, um, commissioned a young woman called Sandra Barnes to do a report on the cost effectiveness of all of the options of how, how to do it up there. And her report came out against a pest proof fence, which is why that report was buried. That came out in 2004. We got it two years later through an OIA on a different issue. So that report was going to stay buried. They'd done it on behalf of John Gork Roger, who'd suggested this was a sensible thing to do. So we know now that they don't work. We know that we don't want it because of the likelihood of dumping poisons up there. There's a lot of reasons. I won't go into all of those details, but I just want you to know that, that that's out there. The latest Coromandel Chronicle makes there's, uh, oh, stoke trapping, uh, it's really hard work and without a predator-proof fence. So you're hearing little rumblings of predator-proof fence. It's just coming up here and there. If we take our eyes off, we always knew it was going to come back because the juggernaut is dock and regional council and they pump the money. As you know, Meg just got just under half a million dollars from regional council um, and good luck to them it's great it's more money coming into our community but not for residual poisons and not for aerial 1080 we're all on the same side when it comes to wanting to kaitiaki our, our wilderness but we don't want an, an inhumane toxins that go on killing even doc says that 1080 will kill stoats because the stoats will eat the rats but as they know, rats bounce back within 12 months, threefold. And what are the rats eating? So, I mean, it's, it's, it's just insanity. And it's an emergency as far as we're concerned at the top of the Coromandel. So please do. Um, it would be great if you would, uh, you know, just repeat your already resolved resolutions and communicate with the health dot protection at Waikato District Health Board and um, uh, declare your support for the people as, as has already been resolved in the past. Thank you, Rayana. Is there any questions for Rayana? Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rayana. Are there any other participants for the public forum? Excuse me, I thought of something that I would like Ada would write a letter and say Coromandel Peninsula is an area that can be trapped. Yes, I think that's a really important point. Our forests are small and we can walk from one side to the other. I've done it. I've walked from one side of Moyhau to the other in a day. So our forests are surrounded by farmland. They're not remote and inaccessible our forests can be trapped and would maybe you would say in your letter please could Coromandel Peninsula be an area that is trapped instead of poisoned? Thank you very much. Thank you Wendy. Mm -hmm. Nobody else? There being none I'll, um, I'll move that the uh, speakers of Jan Autumn, Keith, Wendy, Francis, Mike, and Rayana.
We have those big creeks coming right past our house, and it affects us all. It affects our farms, our, the program of the farm, and everything. And we live with it for months. Doc says it's over in just X amount of time, but that's not so. It goes on for months with the houses, and um, who knows what where those fillets are. And we get a big storm, and they're sort of stored away in a, a hollow log somewhere, and down they come with it. So I won't take up any more time because these other ladies have covered it very well, but I just want to thank you and hope that you can continue to give us a handout because we're dealing with a whole different ball game. We're not even able to talk to Doc about it. We're working through an agency in CoFix and they have a whole different strategy to their approach. And um, it's, it's not satisfactory. Absolutely not so the way they're dealing with it. So um thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, so um with the addition of Theodora, we'll all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Yes, Gary, thank you. So we'll just have a pause for a moment. So um stay or leave, it's entirely up to you what you want to do, but uh, we do have a an agenda to move on with. Uh, <laughs> So we're keeping. All right. So a new item on this time. I would go on the agreement. It's two points. Yeah. Six of interest. Anyone have a conflict of interest to declare? No. I did consider this because um, I've actually got the St. Calgary PD, which is a provider of first aid, which is uh, one of the topics that we have, but um, any funds that would become available would actually go to the trainer, not to the area committee, so I don't yeah. consider there to be an yeah. in there. Yeah. I just wanted to make that clear. Okay, um, minutes for confirmation. So these have previously been circulated. We yeah. need to uh, record that they're true and correct. Move her on that. Yep, I'm there. Okay. Second Can you put all those in favor? Please say aye. Aye. That's carried. Thank you. Um, okay, so page 11 request for community grants to be retained. <laughs> so it's got Margaret's name on it, but it's pretty straightforward. Any discussion needed on that? I'm happy to move it. Happy to move it. Yeah. All those in favour for, uh, for the resolution as it stands, that the uh, request to retain the 2020 Finnish Environmental and Coldwell Community Board grant, Environmental Community Services, what date the 2nd of June 2021, be received and that approved the retention of $650.65 from the community grants provided for the purpose of first aid training for volunteer drivers. Those who please say aye. Aye. Thanks, Gary. Thanks very much. Uh, next slide, point two. So uh, we have a recording from Alan. Would you like to? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a very brief introduction. Hopefully, everybody's read read the report. Um, as you can see, we have an ongoing uh, issue that we need to be dealing with here. So. Uh, I think of particular relevance is the is the attachment from Waikato Regional Council. So we've had a very clear direction from the Regional Council that we are not legally permitted to reinstall the floodgate, whether we want to or not. 
Um, and uh, th that is the whole basis upon which this report is written. So taking into account the direction we've had from WRC, what I've tried to do in this report is to identify um, what the other options that we might have are um, for your consideration. Um, so, yeah, there's five different options that I've identified there, and I won't go through those now because you, you will have all read them quite carefully, no doubt. Um, can I say, though, the, the other thing is that um, we have had um, additional correspondence from um, Joan Forrett, who is a legal representative for at least two, possibly three of the landowners. Um, so um, I'd like you to circulate an email that was received late yesterday um, from so Joan um, that uh, is relevant to the discussion. Um, and um, so if I can just quickly um, summarise for you what's in there, or would you rather just take time to read it? I think we we'll just take a minute to read yep, it. That's okay. right. Yep. <clears throat> Um, so, Mr. Chairman, so in in summary, um, you'll notice there there is a request there from um, from Joan Forrett to, to seek um, an additional option to be considered by the community board, uh, and that is the, the option in the one to the third paragraph there, which suggests there is an option to seek a decision from the Environment Court um, on the on the the, the papers. Uh, and on the on the whole issue, and that's particularly on the basis that um, at this point in time there is three legal opinions floating around. There's one WRC that they have, which they've acted on. There's the one which w, the TCDC has obtained from uh, Barry Simons, uh, and there's also the one that the landowners have obtained from from Joan Forrest. So uh, she is suggesting or asking the community board to consider that additional option about applying for a declaration from the Environment Court. Um, in relation to the status of the floodgate, given that there's those three differing, um, well, there's three legal opinions, mm. two of which are reasonably consistent, not completely, but reasonably consistent with each other, and one which which um, reaches a different conclusion. Uh, the, the other point in relation to the email there is that the last paragraph um, suggesting that the report um, it's reference to a wetland ecology study. I uh, just need, need to clarify that the um, the, the terms that I've used in the report are, uh, are different to that, and that I've talked about um, undertaking a, a, a full study of the wetland in its entirety. Um, that would include, you know, the ecology and the, the effect of the, the tidal movement, etc. So the, the intent of that is certainly to include all issues are rele relevant to the wetland, which will include the study of the ecology. Um, so. Uh, just that probably just needs some clarification that the point that's raised in that was certainly was fully intended that those that part of the uh, those all that issues would be included in any study that we undertook. Um, now the third the third thing the other thing is that um, we did receive an email from Mr. and Mrs. McKenzie late yesterday as well, um, asking or well, suggesting that it would be good for the community board members to to actually see. The site with the inundation that's being caused with the, the flat gate removed. Obviously, we haven't had time to do that before the meeting, but we do have a video uh, that Mackenzie's has sent to us. So, I'd like, with your permission, to be able to actually show that video, just so that the community board members can see um, the the effect that the removal of the flat gate has had on those private properties. We consider the report. I think Donna and or yeah. Esther or somebody oh. geared up to make that happen. Thank yeah. goodness. <laughs> 
It's a silent movie. Correct. Wasn't even sad. I heard squelching and I heard it. Yeah, I heard it. It's a <laughs> noise. So. Have you all seen it? Have you seen it, Kim? No. Okay. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but this, this is the boundary fence here between the wetland and the Mackenzie's property. Who's controlling that thing at the moment? Can we pause there? So, can we just ask who took the video of the Kinsey's? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, well, that brown, that brown area, is that, okay. the, is that died off as a result of salt, 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 salt water? So, it was green previously? Yeah. Replay. So, it's just, so if anybody's got any questions, I think, yeah. and that's okay, we should ask, um, ask as we watch the video. Can I ask what size, when was this done and what size was the tide? Yesterday, so the time, the time, yeah. so I wasn't really worried about the time, but the time survived. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. What was the So that area we're looking at there now, that doesn't normally get any tidal flow through it. Okay. Sorry? Yes. Nothing, there's nothing in there. And it's just that it's high tide now. Uh, yeah, sorry. It's not, yeah, what's the what's the state of the tide at the moment? It's just yeah, the tides are quite small. Measuring about two point six or something. Yeah, we haven't had clean tides either. Yeah. We, we have two point six Yeah. Because a couple of three major tides, but we had very high barometric pressure, and that stopped the water from rising as high as what it does. That's in the harbour and everywhere. Yeah. This is damage is pretty much you can imagine that if it's. So previous to the front gate. The uh, the fence line was the margin for a, for a king tide or uh, no? We never we never got any salt water. Right. But we haven't had good tides this year, so this is only what's happened. Is this where the fence is um, being trampled down to now, Marilyn? Yeah, the fence is, or is, it? Can, the fence is no longer soft through. Yeah. Because the grass had saturated it, and all the grass is not actually pushed. Push through. Is it at yeah. this end or uh, at the other end? Okay. Yeah. We bought it with the fence, so we blazed up there and get the cattle back. Yeah. Um, but it was actually all the way along, it's just actually. And mm -hmm. the yeah, um, Marilyn um, emailed me last night to say about the stock um, approaching the fence. Um, I was down there last night looking for stock, and the ground is so soft that you can just push the post. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, so obviously you can see very clearly the, the, the impact that the removal of the gate is having directly on the adjoining property. Um, now, the, the um, that additional option that's <clears throat> been suggested in the uh, from Joan Forrest is obviously not addressed in the report that I've written. And um, at this stage, I'm not in a position to really give you any advice on that because we would need to go back and 
to put out an order to Mary Simons and just ask them for their for their uh, for their view on um, that option. Um, so I'm not sure how you want to handle it. Mr Chair, uh, Bruce, do you want to add anything at all? So Bruce has been... Mr Chair, no, I don't have anything else yet. I think I'll schedule well. Uh, it's not something we've had the um, the will go so, so one of your options is obviously to defer making any decision um, and ask for some advice on that proposal from Joan Forrett. Um, if you do decide to go down that course, then obviously it shouldn't take all that long for us to get some advice from our legal advisors. Um, and obviously, um, from the landowner's perspective, there's obviously a, a need to deal with this quickly rather than wait six weeks for the next community board meeting. So um, <clears throat> you may wish to consider or we'll discuss how we actually deal with it going forward. If we do get a legal opinion, say within the next week or two, then do you want to look at a special meeting to deal with it? Or do you want to, yeah, I just need some guidance really on whether you want to, to go down that deferral path uh, to look at this other option or whether you just want to progress with the uh, options that have already been identified, um, which, as I said at the beginning, were based very uh, um, firmly on the direction that we've been given from WRC. So you know, we were given, uh, I, I can't recommend in that report, I couldn't recommend any act that might be illegal for the, the council to, yeah. to pursue, uh, hence the recommendation that was um, was put in there. Well, I see, Alan, in your resolutions, number two, the second bullet point down, that funding program can easily be impacted the removal of the flat gate has pretty much been answered by the video we just saw. Oh. There's definitely a, an impact on the landowners. It isn't um, substantial, it's a, it's a fair intrusion. Correct. And, and there's two parts to that recommendation. Obviously, the other part is the wetland environment. And when I, so when I use the term wetland environment, I mean the whole the whole package. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's, there's a mention of a, in, in the email from Joan something about a ecology um, yes. study. Yes, which would be part of that monitoring program. Paid for by council. Well, that's a question you would need to address. <laughs> <laughs> need to address that question, Mr. Chairman. As you, as you see in the report, the estimate that we've got from a professional firm, if we if we engage a, a professional external firm to undertake that monitoring for a twelve month period, is that one hundred and twenty thousand yes. estimated cost? Um, I've, I've used the word um, investigate there because. Um, um, there may be other ways and means of achieving that objective. But, but their advice is clearly, to, if you're looking at just solely the wetland and the ecology and everything else on the wetland, the advice is that to get a full picture, there would need to be a 12 month period in which it was monitored and studied. And so to get a full picture, a full 12 month picture of what was happening within the wetland environment and, and on the neighbouring properties, obviously. Yeah. Um, Joan Forrett mentions a bund. Yes. Um, can we talk about that, the possibilities of that? And yeah, well, Mr Chairman, that, that was your recall. We had that earlier report done by Foresight Consultants, and they're the ones that advised us on this monitoring study as well. Um, and that certainly raised, that was one of the options that was raised as part of that initial um, work that they did. But again, that initial work they did recommended that there would be need to be more detailed work done before they could get a, an appropriate um, solution to to the whole of the wetland. So the bund was one of the one part of a number of different options that were identified in that earlier report. The last bund created a huge amount of trouble, didn't it? The last bund that was there, but I presume now we're talking it would be a bund that would be at the back of yeah, where, the yeah, the where the boundary yeah. Yeah. Um, now, yes. which yeah. would be. A, 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 a solution for the landowners. Well, it could also be a problem. There's a huge catchment area up there. You put a bun there, which is a dam by any other name, and and, yeah. and the water's not going to flow as freely as it did out in the wetland area. Um, there's going to be a lot of, um, it's going to be some remedial work like drainage and stuff down yes, there. That, that report did address that. That's why I'm saying. And from memory, that cost of that bun was 
very, uh, very high. Didn't get a cost on that. Well, I don't think we had a cost on it at the time. No, I don't. Uh, so, but yeah, the, but the report did address the need for uh, the holds as the a whole picture to be looked yeah. at and stormwater management, which would be yeah. associated with it. Yeah, it'd be huge. So that'd be part of the investigation that would have to be done. Yeah. Um, because if we were going to go to the Environment Court, um, that would, to get a, uh, an opinion, Legal or not legal, well, it, it yeah. makes a difference to, because if we know that it's it, it's legal, mm -hmm. and then we discuss how or what how you mitigate the wetland, uh, the gate there. Yeah, well, uh, and, and if it was um, fell down on the side that it was illegal to put it back, and then you'd, um, any money that you would be spent uh, doing ecology surveys could be spent on bums and other sort of mitigating devices for the. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it was. yeah, and that, that's that's actually addressed in uh, in the report. That's one of the options that's in there. The one with the uh, that we look at the smart gate option. Yeah. So that was that was intended to be part of on that. So that's uh, that option four. That was with that with the button. Um, but while it would be looking at the implementation of that smart gate and all, all of the other issues that were raised in that original yeah. Yeah. foresight report. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the one that um, that design, that smart gate design that um, Jim Darn brought, brought to the board meeting, well, it would be about five years ago. Yeah, I do remember it. Um, 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 I mean, the wetlands were willing to even contribute to that and pay for that, um, except to what's, what, what's happened regarding that now, I wonder, because isn't that... I mean, if the issue is the gate and a smart gate would work and stop it the inundation, it already has been investigated and looked at. I'm just wondering, just for its thinking of the long term effects that are currently starting to happen on the yeah, well, that's, well, this, this part of the work that would have to be done. So, so option four is the smart gate option. That again, we would need a resource, according to the current director from WRC, we would need a resource mm -hmm. consent for that. So we will need to do a significant amount of work to to support any resource consent application that would be, that would need to be made. So it would mean all that detailed work that was flagged in the last foresight report would need to be undertaken to put a resource consent together, go through the whole process. Um, you know, and as we've discussed before, there'd be a, a, a strong chance that there would be objections. Um, if it was in the end approved by WRC, then there would still be the opportunity for objectors to appeal to the Environment Court. So, uh, while I'm fleeing, there would still be a, a long lead in period before a smart gate could be installed, assuming that the WRC legal advice is sustainable. Yeah. So, I'm really uh, I'm probably hinting about the, uh, the, 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 the option of getting our legal people to advise us on the, on the um, Environment Court declaration path. Might be the way to go at the moment, okay. mm. but mm. when we get that, we may possibly need to call a special meeting of the community mm. board together to actually um, address mm. the outcome of that. So advice. the environment court would trump the WRC letter. Yes, that would be a, bi a binding legal, legal um, yeah. ruling by the environment court. Yes. Well, I think because there's there's repercussions on on the rate layers, we need to explore all the options before. Agreed. Mm. Yeah. So um, in terms of today, we could. Um, receive your report. Recently, council that the McGuckle Bay flat not be reinstalled because we can't legally put it back right now. And then the second bullet point could be that we um, uh, ask council to, uh, if there's any council considered apply, so ask council to apply for a declaration from the Environment Court regarding the, the activity status of the fund. Yes. Um, and, and, no, I'm just thinking, I think the community board could probably make that decision rather than recommend to council. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. you could just actually make a decision to defer, Bill. You could decide to defer the matter pending investigation into the um, declaration. environment court declaration option. Yep. 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 I'll be comfortable. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then um, we, when you get like that, that advice, we'll have a special meeting again. And Yes. Yeah, first person, person, I'll person, I will follow that up and yep. find out what the time frame for that might be, and work out when we might be able to deliberate on it again. 
Yep. I'll come forward with that. So we've got Tara, so, you need to counsel. And we're no. going to have to repeat what he said. Yeah, so we're not recommending to counsel anymore. We that the that a decision be deferred. Yeah, don't worry about that. I'll get rid of that. Okay. So the board approved yeah. the report to be the report to be deferred. Pending advice from our legal advisors on the option to apply for an environment court declaration. So is that just going to get us advice to before we go to the environment court, or is yes, that so going to put it straight to the environment court? No, no, that will. That's why we will need a special meeting there for you to decide whether you want to go to the environment court or not to make that. So do you don't have sufficient information in front of you at the moment on that option to be able to make that decision? Don't we? Well, you don't know the you don't know the the cost and the process mm -hmm. and the time and yeah. everything else involved. But yeah, fair call. And our legal advice will do some sort of, you know, will give us an assessment of mm. the benefits, you know, the advantages and disadvantages of going down that path. Do you want me to read it? Mm -hmm. The Coromandel Coral Community Board 1 sees the updated McGregor Bay Wetland Report dated 15th June 2021. The board approves the McGregor Bay flat gate not be reinstated. But I think they, I think they can go out. We don't need that. Get out completely. We're just deferring it. Approve the report be deferred for legal for legal opinion pending advice. Sorry, the report be deferred for legal advice from legal advisor. Oh, that's not right. Yeah, they were deferring on that. Defer. The report be deferred. For legal advice on the opinion to apply for an environment court declaration. Yep. Okay. So yeah. moved by John, is it? Yeah, I'll move that. Yep, I'll second. Yep. And all those in favour, please say aye. 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 And Gary. Thank you. Yeah. You understand that, guys? Yep. Excuse me. The thing that's concerning me is all that extra work going. Into that uh, upper bridge in the week, then. Yep. And when the tide drops, it takes the tide you, it's usually two hours after the full tide that the water starts to come and cut out in the meantime it's running in. And when it runs out, it's scouring everywhere because there's too much water in there for the size of the um, bridge. Yep. Whereas the, the gate on there. The amount of water was controlled that went in there. Now it can be a lot more water going in. And it's gone. Yep. And when I, I did three weeks of observing one night a day. And we um, gave it off before. And it, at least two hours after high tide, the tide started to fall, the water was still pushing through all that. Well, hands are tied now, so we're just going to go to the next step and well, find out what's, who's right. What's going to happen if we get a reasonable tide and with the scouring, the way the water comes down, the water's running out, and you get a chop and thing, because the chop along there can be a meter high. And it'll just open up back to down the road. I mean, it's not very far away from the town. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Did the issue appropriate discussion for now? But yeah, please just be assured the council will be monitoring that situation and if there's any. Issue in relation to um, protection over our asset, we would deal with it. With, with the experience I've had in life with these things, it would only take three or four hours to open the road right up. Yep. Yep. Well, our roading manager who's here is listening and uh, he's already been up inspecting it and that will continue. Yep. So we'll be keeping a close eye on it. Okay, um, so. Item 2.3. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And continues. <laughs> okay. So uh, item 2.3, Coromandel Cobble footpath construction budget change. So uh, this report's got Alan's name on it again. 
So, um, yeah, three, Mr. Chairman, just just tidying a bit of a tidy up report, really. So, uh, you'll recall that when the long term plan submission was done, uh, that was we we weren't going to be able to finish the Wall Street path work in the um, twenty twenty one financial year. So we were going to do that in the 21-22 financial year, and there's a budget of 116,000 in there to, to do that and possibly some other work. Um, as it's transpired, our wonderful roading people uh, have been able to actually get that full footpath work completed in the 2021 financial year. Uh, so there's no need for that footpath construction budget in 21-22 to finish off the Wall Street footpath work. Um, and what we had done, we had said that our next priority after that was Pottery Lane West ceiling. So we had proposed that that would be done um, in the 22, 20, uh, sorry, in the 20, yeah, 22, 20, yeah, 22, 23, get yourself confused, in the 22, 23 um, year, and then the footpath construction budget would start again from 23, 24. So what this is doing is saying we can now change, bring the Pottery Lane work forward into 21-22. So this report is saying we'll do Pottery Lane in 21-22 and the footpath construction budget will then start again from 22-23. Yep. All right, so um, any discussion on that? Happy with that? Yep. I'm, Great. I'm thrilled. I, I just, wonderful. I'd just like to say I think it looks amazing. Well, mm. It looks amazing. Yep. <laughs> Outstanding, yes. So um, I won't read out the resolution. I just uh, I'm happy to move it. Do we have a second for the resolution as yep. it ends? Yep. So presumably the, the official part of that, Donna, will come through in the first revision in the new year. But at least we know the community board's happy with it. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, most in favour, please say aye. Mm. Aye. Aye. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you very much. So uh, we're right on. Look at that. One minute over. Morning tea. Need a cup of coffee. <laughs> Fifteen minutes early, actually. Aren't they? Do you want to plough on or do you want to uh, have a cup of coffee? Cup of coffee would be good. Cup of coffee would be good. Absolutely. Take your time. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we'll go for a cup of coffee.